Hello, my friends. Uh, I'm back once again. Today is Sunday, and uh, as usual, I would uh, like to tell you that I have a very special guest with me today. Uh, I always make my videos uh, like you know, I make it individually, but then uh, I love to make it with someone. And this this person is very special for me because he's one of my best friends. He's in fact my best friend. He's in fact my best friend, and uh, he has uh, been with me for. A very very long time. I know him for a very long time, and uh, I'm waiting for him. Is Anjan here already? Anjan, Hi, you... hey, there he is. Hi, Jina. How are you, Jina? So good to see you. Good to see you. Goodness, this is wonderful. Audi already... Audibility, audible, visible, all all right. Very nice. You're looking wonderful. wonderful. The wonderful. man in man in red and with a red wall and everything is very nice and happy. Uh, Face I'm seeing and very happy visual I'm seeing. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you very very much. So friends, as you see, every Sunday I make uh, videos, uh, which you know I I make them alone. But today I'm with a special friend of mine. He is one of my best friends, and uh, Anjan Chaudhary has been an industry name in training. And uh, if I read out his profile now, this is like a huge huge profile, you know. So and then, but then I would love to read it out for all of you to know who he is. But first of all, I must tell you that he is a fantastic human being. I have been with him in training for uh, several years now. For several years, I know him from decades, but I have been with him for training over the past few years. And the best part is that Anjan has no inhibition in putting me to the front, to, the, to put me in the forefront. You know, this is a very competitive world. A very, very competitive kind of a uh, you know a training is very, very competitive. But then he has no qualms about putting his friend right across in uh, to colleges. To schools, to institutes, introducing me to uh, big wigs uh, all over the place, and he has had no qualm. He said, "No, Dina, you must come. You must, you must do this." And this is this is the you know this is the human being that I really really love so much because he's got a heart of gold. Uh, more than being a trainer, he's a person with a heart of gold, and that is why I have him specially for all of you because he's an expert in so many different. Uh, Fields in so many different fields that today I'm in fact uh, privileged that he's on my YouTube channel and he's on my in my show. Thank you, Anjan, so much. Thank you so so pleasure, much. Pleasure, Tina. Pleasure. It's a big pleasure to see you, and it's always a pleasure to interact with you. You are a you are a treasure house of positivity. God bless you, Tina. God bless you too, Anjan, and thank you so much. I hope we have a fantastic time, and I hope children are going to learn a lot from you. That is what my uh, my Sunday program is all about: working with young children and uh, putting things beautiful, positive things across to them. And you are one positive person who is going to. I am sure you're going to put up across a lot of things. <laughs> so, um, so uh, friends, uh, let me let me introduce uh, my friend Anjan to you. I'll have to wear my glasses. Look. I have become a little old, so I'm going to wear my glasses and read this out so that I don't make mistakes. <laughs> so, uh, Anjan is a postgraduate in hospitality management and applied nutrition from Mumbai, ISDT certified master trainer from Mumbai. He's a global master uh, trainer, advanced from London, UK, bootcamp certified from Future Value Retail, Mumbai. He's a senior empanel trainer with IIT Guwahati. Uh, initiated, he has initiated FDPs in various colleges and universities across Manipur University, Dibrugarh University, Kohati University, Jadavpur, Kolkata, B. R. Ambedkar Institute, Bangalore. So you can see the kind of uh, profile he has. He is the first Indian trainer to represent Indian pedagogy of skilled training in London under UK IERI. I hope I got that correct. UK that stands for UK India Education Research Initiative in Plymouth College of Hospitality Studies, UK. He's been nominated twice for the prestigious President's Award in Skill Innovation and Excellence in Training. He's a senior trainer, NIRDPR, Government of Assam. He has been training in government, non-government and PPE sectors that includes Oil India, State Bank of India, Union Bank of India, Principal Secretaries of Central as well as uh, State Brackets, police sources and professors, training of various universities of Northeast India. And I love to read his columns in uh, the different newspapers that he writes. One particular column is the Assam Tribune, and he is the youngest newspaper columnist of the prestigious Assam Tribune to write series of columns since the first 
the past many years of the column Char Charisma Chronicle. This is what I love to read. He has beautiful anecdotes and beautiful stories that he puts, it, puts up in this particular, uh, particular column. He is carrying a work experience and training for 23 years. My goodness. He's a senior trainer, Assam Administrative Staff College, Guwahati. He's a senior training consultant, Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship. He's a recipient of the prestigious Vocational Excellence Award in the year 2015. Now, my friends, let me tell you that this is just 50% of what I have read, what I have read out. Uh, uh, in fact, Anjan has sent me just 50% of what he actually does. Recently, he has worked with something called Skillfinity, and this is his baby. His uh, he has founded this. He is the CEO of this particular, uh, this particular creative, creative uh, thing that he has come up with. And here, he has he has the dream, the wish, the vision to go across to people and tell them what a skill is all about and how important it is for our lives. So, Skillfinity is the word that he. Uh, he is living by now and you will see a lot of videos on on social media where he where there are a lot of people talking about him I love to talk about him as well and today uh, but today Anjan is going to talk to us and one very very important thing let me tell you ladies and gentlemen my dear young friends especially that body language is something which is very very important and I have seen Anjan whenever he sits Whenever he stands, whenever he's talking, whenever he's moving his hands, he does it in a very elegant, very sophisticated and in a manner which will actually uh, capture and mesmerize you. So I have actually asked him and requested him to speak specially on this subject. I remember Anjan when I was a young girl and since I was a young girl, my mother used to always, whenever I used to sit at the chair, she used to tell me, sit straight, put your spine straight. Don't, don't, uh, don't frown. Don't uh, put your hands, don't fly, your, uh, I mean, uh, flay your hands all over the place. You know, she used to be very, very particular about body language. And I have noticed that if you have a good body language, it makes the person more elegant and it makes the person look more sophisticated. I have seen many children who sit in a hunched manner. They have, you know, they, they sit in a hunched manner. Many a times I think that, that I mean, the, the posture, the, the way they sit, it affects their posture later on. And the way they sit actually makes them more graceful. So over to you, Anjan. You are the you're the boss of this program today, and you are going to tell us about how important body language is for young people to start with. Lena, wonderful. The kind of uh, appreciations you hold for me and the kind of uh, accolades that you have, it's like heartfelt. I'm so blessed to have a friend like you, and human civilization should be blessed to have a soul like you who can actually radiate positivity that is for sure when we talk about uh, body languages we cannot deny this is for the younger generation so few of my talks and few of my words could seem like lecture but we would want to know and we would have to say say the basics of how did body language work in, and why do we talk about body languages now as tina says my dearest friend she says that Anjan, you know, uh, has a very specific way of handling hands, movements, facial gestures. That was my subject. And I was trained by none other than the tycoon of personality development way back in 1993 by Maureen Wadia. Now, Maureen Wadia happened to be glad rags from which, you know, film stars like Vipasha Vasu, John Abraham, Ashwarya Rai, Sushmita Sen. These are the people who came out from her grooming classes. Now, I was a graduate from the hospitality management and we had a paper called Kinesics. Now, Kinesics is body movement. The word kinesics has come from the word kinetic motion. Remember in class 7 and class 8, we studied science, motion. Kinetic motion is about movement. And from kinetic motion came this science called kinesics. Now, kinesics is all about your body movements, which has got several genres of understanding. And the young should be blessed, should be grateful. This generation that Tina and her entire concept and counterparts of Freebart's team had uh, planned of this kind of a ready-made platter that we are going to serve in today. You don't find them in books, you know, Tina. You don't find them in, uh, you don't find them in journals. It's not a ready-made affair. It's an evolutionary process. And how does it happen? I will tell you. Now, when you talk about body languages and for younger generations, let's talk for everybody. Have you ever observed that you really don't have to talk with somebody, but while you look at a person, either you feel good about that person, either you feel bad about that person. 
It happens. You haven't spoken to a person, but you feel, oh God, this guy is very rude. You haven't spoken to somebody, but then you feel she's very warm. She should be very good or he could be very nice. Now, these assumptions, the degree of one's likeness and dislikeness towards somebody has been evolved with something called the impact analysis. Now, impact analysis has come from Dr. Albert Mehrabian's theory of human behavior. Now, this Albert Mehrabian's theory of human behavior is a fantastic Everybody has watched this movie called The Titanic. And I keep asking, why did Titanic drown? They said it was an accident, it was an iceberg. And uh, I said, then what was the role of the captain? The captain saw there was an iceberg, but yet uh, it uh, drew, um, I mean, it sailed towards the iceberg. What was the reason? Now, the basic reason was the iceberg appeared to be a little small. And captain thought it's a small iceberg, but we can take a side and the ship would go out. But the submerged portion of the ship, uh, I'm sorry, the submerged portion of the iceberg was very huge. And the submerged portion of the ship hit the iceberg, which was submerged, which was under the water. And uh, it was a wreck and water started flowing in and Titanic had a vertical drowning that we all have seen in the movie. But it was not then when uh, this law was established when the movie was released. This law was established when this historic Titanic was actually drowned and it, it was said that only 33% of 33% uh, of the iceberg was visible. That means the captain thought that the iceberg is too small. His assumption, his mapping, his expected mapping of the iceberg was based on the visibility of the iceberg, which was 33%. Now this 33% is the deciding factor based on which the captain thought that the iceberg is small. Now, this 33% speaks about how we look like from outside. What is how I uh, speak? What is the language of mine? What is my body movements? What, what are my facial gestures? And this 33% contributes to the uh, kinesics, uh, the, the impact factor that I'm going to speak right now. The topmost portion is 33% and the absolute base of the iceberg is considered to be 10% according to Albert Mehrabian's law of human behavior. Now, this 10%, which is the base of the iceberg, is considered to be human beings' qualifications. The qualifications are no qualifying certificates for a good human personality or a horrible or a horrendous human personality. Qualifications role is 10% in a human's personality that qualifies you to not even get a job, that qualifies you to apply for a job. Based on a person's qualification, people do not get jobs. Else, had it been the case, India wouldn't, been had, wouldn't have been a country where there would have been millions and millions of graduates, uh, masters who are unemployed. That is not the case. The important case is the mid portion. 33 and 10 happens to be 43%. The mid portion of the iceberg is about 57%. Where we talk about our skills, where we talk about our innate skills, where we talk about our life skills, where we talk about our ability to talk to people, wherever we talk about the quotients that human personality possess, the IQ, intelligence quotient, the EQ, emotional quotient, based on which we have an ability to make friends, social quotient, not only that I can make friends, but I have to continue this uh, friendship for a longer period of time your and mine friendship are like decades old because we have high eq and sq quotients aq adversity quotients based on which a person should know how to uh, work out parallelly with the rough patch of life these are all that 57 percent which is hidden inside us not seen the deciding factor of a human personality is just that 33 percent we are a huge iceberg, but people do not know my ability. People do not know my capability. People judge my personality based on that 33%. So you imagine that 33% is so very immense and huge and powerful. Now, if it is that, that case is 33%, how should I portray myself so that people do not take a bad impression of mine? People do not take a wrong impression of mine. What do I do? That is that reason we need to understand the impact factor. Impact factor is economically designed. I'll make it very simple for the youngsters who would be watching this rendezvous with Tina. Impact is like a six letter word. 
I M P A C T, impact. And the six letters should carry the following six elements in a person's uh, constitution so that the body language or the kinesics automatically changes. Now, this commonly used term called body language, body language that we keep saying, that's, that's not very right a term. It's rather called as paralanguage. It's not body language. It's paralanguage, meaning the parallel language in accordance with what we talk. That's the way how the body movements are oriented. I'll make it very simple. It's not very complicated. Now, the six acronyms, I-M-P-A-C-T, are words that anybody and everybody can introspect and nurture within oneself. The word I stands for uh, intelligence. Now, when I talk about intelligence, it's not about the power to calculate mathematics. It's not about the memory, mem memory power that, you know, I require to reproduce in my examination halls, the answers that I need to reproduce. IQ is not always, intelligence is not always based on a person's performance in examinations for assessments and evaluations. I stands for intelligence as in how do I handle difficult situations? Now there is an argument. How will an argument happen if I don't participate, participate in the argument? There is a jagra, there is a quarrel, there is a contradiction. How is anybody going to contradict with me if I do not participate? So that's intelligence. Applying that intelligence element, we will be able to save human relationships that we have with people. And you'll see a lot of good people loses human relationships just because people do not apply this element of intelligence. Tina spoke something to me which I felt bad. Now Tina is not bad. That, Tina is not bad. Only that portion of the discussion which went beyond my expectation. That's the reason my feeling of bad is based on that logic that Tina has said. It's not about Tina. It's about the reproduction of the thoughts of Tina. So intelligence is about knowing how to handle human behavior. This is the beginning from where your body language keeps changing. I'm coming back. It's magical. The second part is called M, impacts M, I-M-P-A-C-T-M. M stands for mannerisms. Now in mannerisms, maximum people mistakenly thinks it as being well-mannered, polite. No, mannerisms has got nothing to do with manners. Mannerisms and manners are poles apart. Mannerisms means the way how you handle your body parts. And your body parts are um, nomenclatured for personality development in body language, our body, our body is divided into four body parts. The face, the hands, the torso. The torso is the area which is above our waist and under this neck. This is the square area called the torso. And the fourth one is the legs. Based on these four parts of our body, 63.33% of human personality can be gauged, mapped. That's one reason why a very talented and a qualified guy sits for an interview, but then doesn't crack an interview. That's one reason why a very, very meritorious student sits in for an interview, but then the HR says, good guy, but then I think, I don't know, I somehow did not like him. What are the reasons? It's based on kinesics. It's inexplicable. I'll explain in details. Why interview preparations require a lot of group, you know, body languages? Why did Tina's mom or even my mom always said, sit straight when you sit. Do not have a, you know, hunch at your back this way. People yeah. who has an ability to actually sit this way are a group of people called what and why. We will explain these things right now. And you'll realize how important it is to carry an erect and a stance body movement whenever you're talking to people. That creates a magical bond. It's very easy. Now, the second part uh, is uh, M, mannerisms. The third part is called, uh, the, the third word was uh, P, impacts P. P stands for personality opinions. Now, my body language is correct or wrong is not decided by me, according to Albert Mehrabil's law of human behavior. It's decided by someone else who says this person's body gesture is wonderful. Even nonetheless, there could be one man who could be seated like this and he feels it's a correct body language. Now, what are, what are people looking at him is saying that what kind of a body language is this decides the person's personality. And these are contradictory thought processes. So P stands for personality opinions. Any point of time, somebody who opines us about our personality, we need to hold. 
and think back whether he is right, whether he is wrong. Should I be able to correct myself or it was just like that? P. A stands for appearance. When I talk about appearance, my dear younger friends, I don't know how many people would be watching this uh, talk. Appearance is a million dollar statement everybody needs to follow. I ask everyone, it's a mandatory rule for any youngster, whatever age you are, could be 18, 23, 24, 25 or our age. Once in your lifetime, you should be able to meet one of our most impressive personality whom you should fall in love with. And you should always imagine that I should become like him or I should become like her. Once in your lifetime, meeting a stronger personality is very important. Meeting, I said, it's not on television. It's not on YouTube. Meeting someone, somebody very powerful based on which there has to be an impact on you. Oh God, I want to become like this man. I want to become like her. That's very important. And if people have met these people, you are blessed. And for the group of people who hasn't met, I'll give an address right now. People who are actually watching the show, please take down a pen and a paper. I'm going to give you an address of one person you should meet in your life. But then while you take an appointment and meet this guy, go alone. Do not take you know, a lot of friends along with you. And it's very important. So while everybody writes, you should understand the address is very simple. You should be able to go inside your bathroom, close the door and stand in front of the wall where there is a mirror. In front of the mirror, the world's most impressive personality comes and stands every time. It's not you, it's somebody else who comes there. Look at the person and say, is that the person you wanted to be? If the answer is yes, you have won the world. The world is in your stride. And if the answer is no, please ask that man or the lady who comes in, what should be my corrections? The other person from the mirror would answer you, could be a haircut, could be language, could be smile, could be postures, could be gestures, could be anger management, could be anything that the mirror would answer. Remember, I'm not talking about your reflection. I'm talking about the powerful person whom you would fall in love with. Correct it. Next, again, fix an appointment. Go inside the bathroom, lock and see the world's most impressive personality has to stand there. That is called appearance. Half of the world has said that I, I almost look like Goliath. You know the David and the Goliath. I'm, I look like a monster. And half of the people said, oh God, this man is so overweight. He's so um, obese. He's so, I don't know what, fat, ugly. Petla, petla, petla. Everybody said petla, mota. You know, this is what I have heard. Same for me. But now what happened was, uh, I have become old now. But why people said Petla? Or why people said Obes? I always looked in front of the mirror and I always said, wow, good looking man, man. I look like somebody I'd always wanted to become like this. If I'm not fat, my peep, my, my, my photographs won't come nice. Even local city people give sign. Please come inside. So I've always fallen in love with me. In a news channel, somebody asked me, sir, if you would not, would not have been, had been a trainer, what would you have become? I always say, I would have wanted to become a person like me. I have given, you know, I have written that in my um, uh, WhatsApp status to Tina knows it, the happy trainer. I'm happy every time. I lose money, I laugh. I lose people, I thank God. And half of the things I have learned from Tina, that I have a fracture in my leg, I thank God. At least I'm not amputed. I am alive. I lose somebody as a neighbor. I thank God my family members are safe. These are certain things I have learned from people like Tina. So we understand the world is a beautiful place when you need to craft your appearance. A is appearance. Now, appearance does not speak about branded clothes, Alan Solly and Van Heusen and a Pierre Cardin suit. No. Had it been the case, then only the good looking people would have, if had it been the case, all the good looking people would have been all film stars there. It doesn't happen. We are there still good looking. So now this is why we say we have to be very careful about the appearance factor, the way how you carry yourself, the kind of clothes you need to wear, the kind of colors you need to wear that requires a thought process. I'm coming back to that one by one. Now, after A comes the word C. C is being considerate. Always look from a different person's perspective. I still wonder how people said me, Petla. And I realize 
and I, and I still realize how did they not realize what could have been a scar or a wound when they would have said me, you know, pet lion obese. I was so hurt. It pained me so much. So before we point something at somebody, we have to be very, very careful about how we speak in terms of, uh, you know, going to a different person's perspective. That is called C. C stands for consider it. The easy word for consider it is being empathetic. Being empathetic. There was somebody in a party who met me and said, Arisa, you have managed yourself so well. You are so well maintained. How do you do that? Now, he knows that I'm not actually well maintained because I'm fat and obese. And that was a wrong compliment. People do not know this. Now, the problem is how do I handle it? Speaks about consider it. I understand. Not all the people has been blessed with happiness like me and perhaps Tina. And that's one reason why we are always happy. Not all the people are happy. Sarcasm prevails everywhere. Sadistic pleasure comes in everywhere. We have to, you know, ignore certain things, which even God ignored. Nonetheless, T, the last word, impacts T, stands for tact. Tact is the art of coming out of difficult situation without getting caught. You do not know something. How do you come out of it? Without lying, because lying, I have always believed is a cardinal sin. You just can't lie. Addressing people in the correct way is all that impact matters. Now, when I speak about this word called impact, that opens up a plethora of signs in all of us. And this is what the science goes. This impact flows within us in the four parts of our body. The face, the hands, the torso, and the legs. Four parts. Additionally, with these four, you have additional four things that contribute to your identifying and assessment of human personality. The face, the hands, the legs, the torso, the mobile phone ringtone that you have, the wristwatch that you wear, the perfume that you wear, and the email ID that you have. These are the eight elements comprising of which 63.33% of your personality can be gauged very easily. The controversy is, there could be some people who can say, sir, I even don't wear a wristwatch. Somebody might say, I don't wear a perfume. Somebody can say, I even do not wear, uh, you know, uh, uh, a perfume or even I don't have an email. The tyranny is face, hands, legs, torso, plus any one of the other four elements can also decide the 63.33% calculation of human personality. And believe me, while you look at a particular person once and whatever you feel like when the wavelength comes into you, that's the correct thing. The rest of the things are crafted. Why people say, he was a bad man, but then I feel he's a nice person now. Shuruat me, I think, you know, there was a wrong thing which has come up. That's a wrong assumption. The first glance you meet at first impression is always not the lasting impression because that can be changed. But first impression is the last impression can be a contradictory statement that we can understand. But the first impression to what you receive that is the actual final impression of that person that's been proved in science of psychotherapy. Now, psychotherapy is all about how you assume people like what they are. Why is it important in an interview? Why is it important that you have to showcase these things in an interview would speak about those 57 percent in the iceberg, which is not visible by people. Your ability can't be visible while you give a good answer. A person's impeccable English is not a guarantee that, that he's an intelligent person. A person who speaks synthetic can also be a person who can be very sweet to listen to, but could be even fraud. So how do you find out? Everything has been calculated step by step, which is what I'll explain. So I think, first of all, we will thank Tina, hurtfully, who had given us this beautiful, you know, spectrum and place where uh, younger generation. When Tina spoke about young people, I've spent almost 24 years of my life with younger people. I love these people more than I love myself. Just because I look at them and I realize they don't know that much about themselves, how much I know that much about themselves. That's so very simple. And how does these things work in interviews? How does these things work in, you know, human relationships? I'll tell you. Now, always, it, um, there are certain logics I'll bring forward that the whole world will believe. Believe me, it happens like that. And what are the laws I have given you? So that any controversy happens, you should refer the law. You should study the evolution and uh, assessment factors. And you'll realize why these things were said. Now, everybody said, Tina also would agree, that everyone should have a smiling face when you interact with person. 
a smile. Am I right, Tina? This is what we do every day. Yes. My mother used to keep saying this: keep smiling. Yeah, we have. So so your don't get wrinkles, and she used to, and because of those wrinkles, I used to get scared. I said, "Okay, let me keep smiling then. Instead of having a <laughs> face, let me have a smiling face." Absolutely, absolutely. Now, when it's about smiling face, people do not know how to smile. That's the biggest problem, and that's why psychotherapy suggests that a smiling face always could be a sign of nervousness. So you should always not smile is not the line. The problem is how do you smile to draw lines, to speak to people if there is a barrier after that you should stop. There are so many ways of obstructions that we need to create upon. So the first thing that we need to say, please try and try to develop a neutral face in a uh, face when, when, while talking in an interview. Why, why am I talking? This, why am I uttering this word called interview? That's because that's a ground when people evaluate us. If I and Tina were meeting for the first time today, our interaction would have been different because we would have been evaluating each other right now at this platform. Henceforth, things would have been different. That's why while you smile, please also need to know how to carry a neutral smile. Neutral smile speaks about no personal emotional touch with that smile. Personalized towards one person. First part. There has to be a smile on the face, but the smile has to be dictated by the terms and conditions of your flow of conversation. Smile in the time of a monologue. Monologue means while it's being delivered from your end, the smile needs to be restricted. But if the smile is translated into a dialogue, if the, if the conversation is translated into a dialogue, then the smile can exist. But in the monologue process, the smile has to be restricted. Now, while the smile has to be restricted, the idea is not ever to say that I have asked you to make your face go frowning like this, as if, you know, what wrong has it happened? No, it's about clear forehead. The moment you have a frown here, that means you are a disturbed persona. A disturbed persona's initial uh, drawback is decision-making ability. People who do not know how to take decisions. I'm coming back to these things one after the other. First, smile. The second thing is the face. Half of the civilization of this universe does this mistake when they take their face to be granted that how and wherever my face is, I can handle it. No, you can't. Because ideally when we converse with people, ideally when we talk with people, you cannot have a tilted face. Tilted face means a face which can be tilted towards the left hand side or towards the right hand side. A tilted face is always a sign of arrogance, rigidity, stubborn. So that's one reason why Tina's mom always said, sit straight. The moment you sit straight, a straight body gesture will never have a tilted face. The moment you have a hunch, automatically a tilt will come. The moment you sit straight, the, the tilt will automatically go. That, these, these are reasons why, you know, things has been spoken that. Now, a tilt in the face is always a sign of rigidity. That does not mean that if you are actually having a tilt in your face, means you are a rigid character. It means people are people who are looking at you, people who are observing you. They would take it. They would understand that this is how this person should be rigid enough, or this person would be very rude. That's why one reason we cannot be this. While we talk to people, it's very important that you have a straight face with your chin facing the chest. Chin facing the chest is a sign of humble behavior, down to earth. A person who can actually seek apology, a person who can be flexible, a person who can be pliable. These are not wrong terms because an employer during the time of, time of an interview would actually want to hire a person who is not rigid. However and whatever be your percentage of marks, the scores in your mark sheets are not qualifying elements based on which you can work with 10 other people in an office. Based on your emotional quotient, social quotient, ability to talk to people, ability to form a quality circle, you would be able to work in an office. In an office, we work with 10 to 50 to 500 people, not based on our qualification. These are very important for us. I, I want to ask you a question here. Uh, for the sake of the young people, many you have spoken about a tilted, uh, you know, a, a, a tilted head. And you've said that uh, this person, it shows the body language of an arrogant person. But can it also be that, you know, the person, you know, sometimes we listen to someone like this. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. Yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. Right now, I'm coming. <laughs> their, their face and then, you know, listening to their grandmothers yes. or fathers. When I'm, coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming to it. 
a tilted face without a support so see i have got a tilted face now a tilted face without a support means no koru namanu ja ji kori bi kor the moment i have a hand in the support here so this is a different body gesture now you see i have a tilt but still this is this way now you see the activity of the palms and the hands means what the moment it is folded this way this is what i am listening to you i am listening to you no rigidity here but if there is one finger which goes here when i am listening to you with a tilted face i am now evaluating you as i was saying misa was saying word word ra kiya se alpal ko jo na to boka na to so this is evaluation this is evaluation the moment this hand is this way this way this is deep deep intensifying inside the conversation the person is lost in the conversation very deeply engrossed in the conversation this is this if the person puts his hand on the chin this way he is mm -hmm. filtering now five things you have spoken tin ta long baki do ta lobo noari filtering this is filtering process you have both the hands this way listening that means the person is actually dead he is sleeping he is least <laughs> interested in your conversation he is telling you seen, this i have seen some of my students like this <laughs> <laughs> the The moment you have somebody here like this, you should actually say, "Ki bairo utho kalab saa saa thaya ho." You are not here. You are sleeping actually, and finding a tough time. So these are the movements that we have to be careful. Now, while you put your hands this way, there could be many people who tickles this thing like this. This is serious, serious disbelief in whatever you are saying. Na iti na ibo to ulta punta tumi ko sa mo man na manu ibo to ko. This is wrong. That means rejection. This is rejection. it is not elimination elimination means filtration it is here this is rejection so hence for these things see an hr who would take an interview the hr is quite very literate in these terms and many other people are not that is why these sciences come down in college education in professors training in is officers training these things people should know now now these activities whatever i am doing in the analysis what i am whatever i am saying does not mean this is you it means that the person's view point towards you the look towards you outlook towards you is this i am doing this does not mean actually i am filtering or doing whatsoever you are thinking these things your thought process this is about personality opinions that's the mm -hmm. biggest difficulty hmm? now I, i i would always be looking and listening to somebody like this and mm -hmm. i i cannot say that i am not rigid now tina you know how rigid i am actually mm -hmm. it is true it is rigidity now i spoke about rigidity i did not speak about positivity or negativity here rigidity also has a negativity as well as a positive perspective to it also eta bhalo karon eta bostu korim 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 e korim i am very rigid that i will develop myself this is a good sign no this is a very good sign you will understand how things work out when i come next so these are few things from the face and that coming to the yes tina Anja, sorry, I'm interrupting. No, you because uh, because you're such an expert in this in your subject. So I, this is a question again for younger people. You know, many a times I've noticed uh, that you know on television I've noticed that you know when a politician I'm coming to politicians now mm. I've, I've, I've noticed that when they say something uh, so my talay boy si and then I went there and you know he touches his nose. So is that uh, some sort of indication that he's lying? Fabricated. Or fabricated yeah. body language scratching the nose is a fabricated body language misa kotha koise simple it has to be there i'm coming to fabricated body language more now scratching of the nose misa kotha kowa hoise scratching of the ear fabricated body language scratching of the head nervous behavior that is not lie but scratching the nose or many people could be doing this also you know under the nose this way fabricated i don't say lie i say manufacturing of something which has not happened that is called fabricated body language you're absolutely right in that that is absolutely correct mm -hmm. oh yeah now this is about face mm -hmm. now next we will come about come with hands hands now while i talk about hands the first thing we all should be very careful is never ever in your wildest dream ever try to do this this is one of the most negative body gestures human civilization has Now this is wrong body gesture. This is but, called a negative estena. But here I'd like to tell you something that all the politicians, whoever's photograph comes out in the poster, they all have this and negative body gesture. Isn't that a kind of a blocked thing? You know, like yes, you yes, know? yes, 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 yes. 
few people. I don't want to listen to anything. No. This yes, yes. This means I don't want to listen from you. I, I open open torso acceptance. Crossed. I will not accept from you. This is this. And by God's grace, with a sing, with a folded hand, if a person rests on the table this way, he matlab, he has set to lie. Resting your hands with a crossed hand on your table is super duper fabricated body language. It's fabricated body language. Now I'm coming back to these things one after another. Now, why is this thing has it happened? Uh, this is a wrong body gesture. I was in London during that time, Plymouth College. Now, you see, uh, Europe has uh, more advanced ways of these aspect synthesis, which our country would not have done as of now. They said there's a youth icon in your country who's called as Swami Vivekananda. And Swami Vivekananda's posture is always this way, this cross body way. posture. Do you think he was rigid? So I said, um, I don't know. So she said, yes. Now there were letter correspondences with Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, Rabindranath Tagore, based on which the translations of kinesics worked out. And it was proved that Swami Vivekananda was actually very, very rigid. He was very rigid. Now rigidity has positivity inside. Rigidity would have negativity inside. But during Swami Vivekananda's time, example, this was rigidity because of positivity. But we have many people around us whose crossed hands rigidity would also mean negativity. So that is why. And always one person's body language cannot universally rule Albert Mehrabiyat's law of human behavior. That cannot happen. Yes. Now the second part is <clears throat> while you sit with a folded hand in front of the table, ideally when we sit over a table, table, what, whatever I mean, however way we talk, our hands and our chest has to be open. This is the way how it has to be. It has to be open. This area has to be open. No blockages here. More blockages here, you are more disturbed. Personality. This is one thing we have to be careful. Many people, you would see, while they listen to you, they keep doing this with their mobile phones. Have you seen that? Yes, yes, I've seen that. Absolutely. This is called, this is called reverse T signal. This is T. This is T. This is reverse T. Reverse T signal means this person is telling you, shut up. I don't want to listen to you now. Shut up. Now, anybody who is doing this in front of you, take it as a test, everyone. Anybody who is doing this in front of you, you stop your conversation and you ask, repeat Guarantee. No answer will come because she was not in the conversation. Her body constitution is telling you to shut up. So anytime you see somebody doing this, you should always say, I think I require some more, another time to come up and talk to you. Right now, I think it's not a very correct time. You will not listen to me. This is, and the person will say, Nainai Mokhuni so kok, kok, kok. Mm -hmm. His body has given you signals. This is reverse T. This can happen with a marker pen. This can happen with a pen. This can maximum time happen with a mobile phone. This is called reverse T signal, which we are not supposed to do. One thing. The second thing is, you'll always see there are some people who does this. Have you seen this? Yes, yes, absolutely. When they listen, yes. does this. This is called uh, this is called uh, lack of decision making up, uh, abilities, superlative degree. Anybody doing this, they cannot take decisions on time. They cannot take. They repent a lot on their decisions. I wish I would not have decided this way. I think this is a wrong thing which has happened. So this is very very wrong. So while we sit in a conversation, we will never be able to sit like this. This is a wrong process in a conversation. This is ready to fight. Ah, Turkiki as supposed to move. Kot I should move to them. This means this. It can be always open. We are here for discussion. We are not here for uh, controversy. We are not here to prove that I am right and you are wrong. So the hands has to be open. The torso has to be open. Open. Boys, every time, open palms, signs of confidence. Girls, open palms, signs of lack of confidence. You'll see any time a very well poised girl or a female always will have a closed palm, always will have a closed fist while she sits in. Close fist means she's very, very confident. It's a masculine and a feminine, feminine affair that we have to respect. Another thing you will find more, most of the times, have you seen Tina? Uh, while people talk, they do this and they talk. Yes, I've seen you hold Tategolu and then you know what happened and this is that. This means brutal strength. Mari mu phataidim. This means this. The brutal strength means the person will always be uh, 
you know he will bring in physical strength on the conversation i'll give you an example of uh, a psychotic disorder patient uh, kind of a you know a psychological patient you'll see some people whenever they get very angry they go out of that situation and some people they would break glasses and cups and throw tantrums and catch hold of collars and they would shout this category always would be this anybody who is under this category remember pain eta holo doli mari pelabo otherwise laptop mobile phone bhangar higher chances ase they are not very good people to work with as a team and by and by you know, whatever if by ill luck or bad luck if you have your boss or your supervisor who is this he has to be a he has to be under the nomenclature of autocratic leadership autocratic leadership means yaha sirf mera hi raj chalta hai if you look around in today's democracy you will find a lot of autocracy leadership happening everywhere around now i don't mean to say the political scenario i mean to say you know this is my rule i have made it and you agree or you disagree you have to abide by now autocratic leadership has given various leaderships births transactional leaderships transformational leaderships bureaucratic leaderships laissez faire leadership now these are be various things which will work upon and your body language will keep on change so that is why we have to be aware about these body languages acha now you will you will find uh, another body language more, uh, many a times you will see that they do this um, can i have a pen from the other side you they do this this is called fidgeting yes yes i've seen this fidgeting it, fidgeting it, means uh, fidgeting means absolutely lack in concentration to what the speaker is saying and he's running out of time impatient behavior very very impatient so these things would be very difficult for people to you know assert in values so this is there hmm? now uh, tina there are some reasons that we have to uh, we can't forego them from the constitutional uh, from the psychological architecture that we you know form by meeting various people now meeting various people i keep on changing my persona meeting various environment or from ecology to ecology my body language changes if it happens then i will never have an originally original personality of my own now tina sits like this uh, in front of me in the camera and i'm sure she is the one who sits the same way even in watching a television even watching a television she'll never be able to sit like that you know this is what we understand that <laughs> i am not i i yeah i have seen people you know putting their putting their legs on their walls and perhaps another leg on the ceiling fan and because they're relaxing even we have to relax we relax in even in a poised manner imagine what are you uh, i mean viewers would be able, would, would would be able to relate to what i speak tina had a um, uh, tina was hospitalized some days ago she was not well while i went to meet her even in the icu she was in coma almost but then she was uh, you know her body language was never like this you know that she's half dead it was not like that ki upar kombol sambal japi dise ki adbhut ki baat no absolutely speaking span kapur e phale ase umuk e phale ase nothing it was ekdam chaka jaga chak so that is the constitutional architecture of uh, human beings to be able to produce portray what you actually think here imagine i go for a, i go to a salon for a haircut or i go to the vegetable vendor uh, to buy vegetables but then i would not go with a half pant and a, you know things like that i would still you know apply some cologne and you know do like that and get some do spray I and mean, my wife says me you are going to a salon so why do you require a do it's like in the default system that we want it to be portrayed in the best expected form and we don't want ourselves to be looked at something which is very weird forget about other people complimenting us in an interview why does these things matter i'll tell you. the first question in an interview for youngsters people have said you should be able to wear good clothes good clothes as in well ironed clothes well ironed clothes um no crushes here and there there should not be stains on your clothes here also i did not mean to say about an expensive pair of clothes i said about a clean pair of clothes it could be a 200 rupee shirt it could be a 100 rupee shoe or a 200 rupee shoe from laktokia market that can be there even i wear shoes from laktokia market but the way how i carry people thinks that these are woodland shoes but no 250 rupees ka 300 rupees ka juda hum log bhi pehen ke nikal jate hai hai na so this is how you carry yourself why in an interview why is this assessment given to you the assessment is given to you because it is believed that anybody 
who can uh, who can take care of yourself well would be able to take care of the workstation well too. If you know how to take care of your clothes well in an interview, it is obvious that you will be able to uh, take care of your workstations too. You are clean in the way how you appear. Clean shaved face is a sign that your workstation would also be clean, discreet. You'll be you'll be punctual. You will have time management effectivity. These are assumptions taught to uh, the HRs while they evaluate you. Because kinesics, the body movement, gives birth to its second brother, which is there in our system, which is called proxemics. Now, kinesics is body movement, and you have a correct body gesture and posture. Proxemics is how you know you go uh, near the person. It's about the space. Uh, it's about the space that you utilize. Now, what space am I talking about? The mental space. How close you go to a person in an interview board while he, while he asks you questions. The HR asks you never a difficult question. And the younger generation, everybody should understand. Interview preparation, may everybody is like, you know, he has asked me a question. Is ka answer me kya bolu? He had asked me a question. Is ka answer me kya bolu? First of all, he had asked you a question. Please understand the relevance of the question. Only then your body language will be strict and stance. What is the meaning of that question? The first question, let's talk about younger generation. While Tina had spoke about young generation, let me give you more advices. The first question in any interview is a universal question. Tell me something about yourself. And tell me something about yourself means you jump into an encyclopedia as if you're writing your self-proclaimed biography. I like pink pajamas. Shah Rukh Khan is my favorite actor. Chicken momos are my favorite food. Who has asked you to speak these things there? Why do you think that these matters? Who the hell are you? Why will people want to know what are your you know, color likes and you know, food likes and you know, um, uh, celebrity likes? I love uh, Shah Rukh Khan. So, when he will show the movie in office, Shah Rukh Khan will show you Pink is my favorite color. So he's not going to make the dress code pink, no, for uh, the offices. That means you are misutilizing the time. He had asked you to sell yourself. You know what is selling yourself? I'll tell you. If you buy a piece of soap from a market, you'll see a lot of things written there. You know, aloe vera, itna grams, milk, itna gram, honey, itna gram, glycerin, itna gram. Or sab kuch mila ke ye sabun ban gaya. If you lagao, so you become like Karina Kapoor. So that's called marketing strategy. The same, same question is asked to you. Sell yourself well. That means the vacancy which is aroused in the office, vacancy bohar karne ki ki characteristics do you require? The same characteristics you also have is something that you have to promote in this answer. Tell me something about yourself. I have seen a guy applying for a marketing profile. So a marketing profile job, he comes in and he says, I'm looking for an office job where I can sit in an office and talk. Such a waste of time, money, energy, and everything. Now, while you actually wanted to sit in an office and do a job, but you've applied for a marketing job, we need to change our tell me something about yourself protocol. We'll say traveling is fun. I like traveling to places, meeting new people, a lot of cuisines. I loved everything and everything. And, you know, traveling the whole universe, universe is full of positive power. I think that makes a marketing professional successful. The ability to travel, the passion of traveling, the whole world knows that a person like me only at this age, just because of Corona, I'm stuck. Otherwise, I'm always traveling, every day yes. traveling. And <laughs> never, ever I was tired. Had it been Bokakhat or is it in Buckingham? Is it, is it there or is it wherever? It was fun for me, wherever I have traveled. I traveled by city buses. I've traveled by bullock carts. I've traveled by international air. I've traveled by train, second class, third class, fourth class. It was fun. And even tell, believe me, even I was traveling by a sleeper class train, I have 50 friends in the compartment and they would still tell me, sir, your journey and your companionship was wonderful that we still remember. I think that's the magic of human life that we need to portray. Out. The second thing, please remember, while Tina speaks about your interview skills and dynamics, I'll tell you something. You need to be very careful about your torso. The third body part is the torso. Torso is this area which always needs to be inclined to the front while you're talking to somebody. Look at me the way I'm talking. I've come to the back. The moment I'm this, this is called reclined torso. Reclined torso means I'm not taking, I'm not accepting whatever you are saying. Reclined torso means reclining is going away. 
inclining is coming forward to listen to you. That's why while we talk to people, while we sit and talk to people, body inclination should be always towards the front. You will see there are good speakers on the podium. Even if the microphone is here, they don't stand this way and they talk. They are always this way. They'll always bend like this and they will talk. The best to best, you know, uh, anchor, look in front of whom am I talking these things. So we have a veteran and a legendary anchor here. So you'll always see front inclination. Front inclination means I'm here to give you more of what I know and more of everything that I can. You are here for presenting yourself. Presentation cannot happen this way. It's always this. Whenever you give something, do you actually, you know, recline back? No, we don't do that. So it's always towards the front. Now, the Mool Mantra of an interview, always remember. Sit like, um, enter like a horse. Sit like a king. Come out as humble as an employee. So enter like a horse means you're not supposed to gallop inside the interview board like a horse. That's not what I have said. A horse is something that you have to know, which, which synchronizes with uh, power, energy, oh. enthusiasm. So enter like a horse means there are some people who knocks the door of an interview and almost there, uh, you know, 80% of the body is inside and they ask, may I come in? And there are some uh, sarcastic interviewers like me who says, you're already in, you know? So that's why you have to be very careful about these cheerful attributes of interview dynamics in, 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 in body language. Knock the door thrice, boldly. Boldly does not mean you bang the door, not like that, you know, in a bold three knocks. Open the door and only peep your face inside to say, may I come in, sir? Or may I come in? While they say, come in, please lock the door and from the door, wish them good morning, good evening, whichever is applicable. And I have seen many of the people out of nervousness, even a principal of some college yesterday, I was doing this training at around 4.30. He says, good morning, everybody. So that's something you have to be very careful about. 4.30 in the afternoon is not morning. And there are some people who says, I'm meeting you for the first time in the day. That's the reason I'm wishing good morning. This is a crap information. This is just no logic behind it. No. 3.55, 3.59 p.m. 3.59 p.m. Evening starts. 4 o'clock onwards, good evening. 3.59, good afternoon. So these are simple logics. 11.59, good morning. Barabajgya, good afternoon. And even you have somebody uh, whom you have met at 4 o'clock and the meeting ends at 4.30, while you leave, say, have a pleasant evening. Common sense. There are some people who says, ko to nahi padega. So I have said that at good night. Matlab, tum sone ke liye chale jao. So you have to be more careful about these basic etiquettes which will work out on your body movements. Now. Enter like a horse's, uh, you know, energy, full of energy. Wish the person from the door itself. Do not walk, come in front of him and then wish. Because you wish somebody whenever you meet somebody at the first glance. So from the door itself, say good evening, uh, good morning, good evening, whatever. Close the door from that side itself. Latch it. Otherwise, you will have your subconscious mind thinking that this interview would be, you know, audible by some other people outside. So close the door. There are some doors which might not close. Do not battle with the door by the side of the door itself. Try it. If it doesn't, leave it and come aram se. And hand over the resume. Take the resume out of your stick file. And then, you know, put it out of the stick file. Get it straight and put it in front of him to say, sir, this is my resume. Or this is my CV. Whatever you are carrying. And he says, uh, please be seated. Only then when you sit. Now, when he says, please be seated, then only you sit. Otherwise, do not sit. But the problem is there are two kinds of people. One who, could, who might have uh, intentionally not offered you a seat. Or someone who must have forgotten. Do not be dumb to actually keep on standing there for around two, three minutes. If he has forgotten for at least 30 to 35 seconds, hold. On the 40th second, say, sir, can I be seated? Oh, yes, please be seated. I'm so sorry. I forgot to ask you to sit. Sit and say, no problem, sir. Thank you very much. As if you don't have a sleep disc problem. So, so we will not do that. While you sit, do not sit in the chair. Not like that. While you sit in an interview and for a discussion, take the half portion of the chair. The chair seat half portion of the chair. The moment you sit on the half portion of the chair, automatically your legs goes under the chair. And the legs, 
uh, the toes of the legs are rested on the floor this way and the heels are on the air. That is how it happens because it's a laptop. I'll not be able to show you. This is how it happens. That is called ready to work posture. That is the correct way of how you need to sit in an interview board. That is called ready to work posture. Legs bend under the chair and the weight of the body on the toes of the leg, ready to work posture. Fantastic body gesture. Now what to do with the hands? Your hands will not be on the table, not be on the table. Your hands will be on the thighs of yours. Inner thighs, inner thighs, not on the side of the knees. There are some people who keep their palms on their knees. Knees mein haat rakhne ka matlab hai, impatient. You are about to get up. Hum log uthte wakt hai na, pressure deke uthte hai na. So knees ke upar mein haat matlab, you don't have time. Take the palms out of the knees towards your thighs, inner thighs. And the hands has to be open. That means you have sat like a king. Now, what do you mean by sitting like a king? Sitting like a king is not about confidence. I'll tell you. What does a, what does a king do when he sits in his, uh, you know, Raj Khobhajitya Bohe? What does he do? He sits to give, to please his uh, proja, to please his fellow countrymen. He gives dhan, dollar, tax exemptions, whatever. He gives. You will also sit like a king to give answers till the time he is satisfied. Ek raja tab tak deta rehta hai, tab tak jab tak uska praja khush nahi hota. You will also do the same thing. You will give as much as possible satisfactory answers which will make him happy. That's why I have said sit like a king. And then the third is applicable. Enter like a horse, sit like a king, come out as humble as an employee. Coming out as humble as an employee means you're already shortlisted. You're already selected. That is why we spoke about these kind of body gestures. One thing which you'll never do in an interview is tapping the feet. And there are some people who taps the feet. Tapping of the feet is a sign of impatience. Now, Tina, when I talk about impatience, what do you mean? Uh, I mean, uh, when I talk about impatience, where do we see impatience? Within an adult or within a child? I see, I see a lot of impatience in both adults and, and children as well. You know, I, when you were talking about tapping your feet, I have seen people how they have, they put their, you know, they, their, their knees, they, they, they keep flapping like this. I have seen so many politicians, I've seen elderly people, I have seen younger people, I've seen people of your age and I've seen even younger, even I, I mean college students. They've also been doing the same thing and I wonder why they do this. Are they impatient? Are they, and then this is a bad body language, I think. I'll tell, really yes, 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 I'll tell, I'll tell you. No, while I had asked you, why, why, where do you sit? Many a times I have actually... And believe me, once what happened, I was in a, I was in a, uh, in one of the conferences where there was, I was sharing days with some other women, and this was all a, a, a women's conference. And uh, this lady sitting next to me was flapping her legs, with, and she was wearing a mekhela sadar, and she was flapping her legs so much that you know the whole days was shaking. And at one point, I had to tell her, "Excuse me, ma'am, can you just not do this because yes. the, you might fall off the days, you know? Yes. Please don't do this." And yes. the days fall. It yes. was a small few days and we might fall off the entire stage. So, yes. you know, so mm -hmm. I think I, and many a times I, what I have done, even in, when I go to my son's school, I have noticed parents and they, while they're listening to the principal speaking, they flap their legs, you know, they flap them together like this, especially the fathers, not the yes. mothers, <laughs> the fathers because I have to get videos and I'm a video person, you know, you've seen me, how I keep taking videos. So I, I have taken videos of these fathers and I said, okay, let me keep this for reference to for future, you know, sometimes I'm Yes, yes, yes. I'll tell you. Now, I had asked Tina this question, ki, impatience is seen where? Impatience actually has originated from child ego. These are children egos, no? like I want to have it right now. Impatience is always child. Now, tapping of the feet is about impatience, meaning you have a child ego. Child ego means a lot of immaturities in, you know, existent in your personality. Immaturity means, I want it right now. I'll throw tantrums. This is that tapping of the legs that you should always avoid. I, I, will, just, I will just say something. Uh, quickly, I will say something. Sorry to interrupt you. Again. No, no, no. This was this was way back uh, when I was doing my Kezal Gura. You know, I was I was acting in a serial, as you know. I was acting in an Asmi series. That was my first Asmi <coughs> after I came from Shillong. So I was reading my script, 
and at the same time i was flapping my you know i was i was i was tapping my legs sorry i was i was shaking my knees both my knees i was shaking it in such a manner that you know which showed that i was i was nervous i was nervous or i was uh, you know kind of feeling nervous about the script or the whole scene or something like that then santana bordoloi i think you've heard her name she's a very good a director plus she's a, she was a very good actor in that particular serial and she came up to me she hit my legs and she hit it very hard she smacked it she smacked my uh, the back of my legs uh, the, the calf muscles and she hit it and she said haven't your parents taught you any manners why are you shaking your legs like this and believe me anjan from that day hence that was way back in the 1990s i haven't i haven't shaken my legs i haven't tapped my legs and whoever tap taps it i always give them this example please don't do this this is bad manners you know how to do that absolutely and today i'll break down why is it bad i'll tell you the synthesis of what ina had said i'm coming back first of all to the impatient factor tapping of the legs which is done there's a lot of talk that ayantina had done right now regarding the flapping of the legs you know you do the nail knees this way and that way and supposedly to be yeah this is what we do unknowingly people does it now i'll tell you what is the meaning of this body language is while i was in california in the year 2007 only then it, i was trained they said it is only found a maximum time in indian men not women who would do it and the synthesis the uh, i mean the breakdown of this body language is not applicable on women also it is applicable on men and statistics wise it is seen that mard zyada karte hai ye cheez why do they do that i'll tell you flapping flapping of the legs happens to be one of the most vulgar body languages human civilization could see it's very very vulgar now the question is the person is not vulgar who is doing it i did not mean to say that the meaning is the definition is very vulgar and that is true uh, it can happen that supposedly i am doing this you know flapping of the legs and that does not mean i have vulgar components but you observing me you will realize this man has got vulgar issues what vulgar and what i am telling you it has got two uh, meanings psychotherapy says the first meaning is it has got two ways of one is from the yogic sciences meditations and techniques of yoga and body movements another is from uh, another is from uh, the psychotherapy who says psychotherapy says flapping of the legs the first thing is a man who forgets at time that he is man he sexually arouses himself as man in public that is wrong and it is correct in the meditation and the yogic sciences also i'll tell you right now how it has matched the second in the west it is believed that anybody who does this flapping of the legs is inviting women for sex that moment itself that is how it is very very wrong you will always see this is subconsciously done any time you see a man doing it in front of a woman the woman will take her bag or even a file and would actually sit like that she is not very comfortable or she would pick up anything and she would do this or kuch nahi hone se sari wali theek karke baith jayega she is like concerned yeah. about the man's looks but very the problem is the the problem is the man is not vulgar it is not at all an indication but this is how the synthesis is meditation and yogic sciences has said if you go to ramdev baba shivir and he says this is a kind of an exercise he has advised flapping of the legs he has advised men with high impotency disorder he says a less amount of sperm cells um, generated in a human body might as well not help him for reproduction that's why this kind of exercises can generate a lot of sperm cells in his body based on which uh, you know he can bring in the next uh, generation in the family that is why these uh, body languages are wrong now you see flapping of the finger sexual arousal and in the meditation techniques they have said this is actually uh, arousing that's one reason where we find the common point hence forth it is not i did not say that people who does it are sexually active in public and all no i did not mean to say that i only said this is somehow generates uh, uncomfortability towards the opposite gender and you will never see hardly barely you will see a woman who would do that so that is what we need to coming back almost because it's a huge science i'm I, i would have less amount of time restriction from tina the last thing which is what i tell you uh, the the last thing is about eye gestures that we have missed out and while we speak about eye gestures we look at both the eyes when we talk to people now again i'll ask this is tina and me you know interacting that does not mean i'm throwing questions to her why we look at uh, tina what do you think with both of your eyes do you look at both of my eyes or one eye what do you think I think I look, uh, you know, at in the middle, and then, uh, and uh, maybe you know, because I'm if I'm too close to you, then probably I'll be looking at one eye, 
But now since I'm looking at you, I look at one eye at once, one eye another time. I, I keep Absolutely. looking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely correct. People who says that I with two of your eyes you cannot look at the other two person's eyes and that's why people do not know how to look at eyes and there is one particular breed of people who do not even know how to look at a person's face either for men either for women which is even dangerous you'll feel like slapping them so the way how you need to hold your eye gestures on the eyes is by the law of reflection if you remember the law of reflection in light with one, you know, the incident ray that falls on one object and it falls on, on, on one lens. That means with both of your eyes, you can look at any one eye or on the forehead or on the nose or on wherever. But looking at the lips till this area, if you look at somebody's, you know, this area, that is fine. But looking at the lips and on, it's bad manners. You're not supposed to. So while we look at our eyes, look with our eyes, we ideally should go to the right or to the left eye. And then gradually to the right eye, on the opposite eye, and draw an imaginary T line on the nose here. So that way you are drawing a T here. Your eyeballs rotates from left to right and right to the tip of the nose. That means you are enlivening the conversation. Enlivening the conversation, meaning you are inside the conversation, deep. The very important catch of today's, uh, today's lecture, whatever I could say, is the two triangles of your face. There are two triangles. One triangle constitutes the nose the eyes and the forehead and the other triangle constitutes the nose, the lips, the chin, reverse triangle. Now you'll observe while you talk to people, if you have an intention or inclination to observe people on the above triangle, looking at the forehead, eyes, you know, this area, that means you are somehow not happy with the person. Chances are there you will contradict. Chances are there you'll argue with the person. You have a negative infliction towards the person is the reason your eye gestures went to the right triangle. I mean, the straight triangle. Now, if you have a inclination towards the nose, the lips and the chin, this area you're looking at a person and you're talking, that means you are very, very familiar and friendly with the person. This is what we need to understand. Now, sitting with crossed hand, wrong, uh, fabricated body language, I understood. But it is always not proof that it is wrong. There are other ways of it also. What ways? Now you observe the eye gestures. See, I have set in a wrong body gesture in front of you. Now, wrong body gesture does not mean uh, fabricated body language. How will you find out the fabricated body language? Now with his eye gestures. While conversing, people has a general tendency of looking up and talking. Either this side, either that side, right hand side or left hand side. So whenever he talks, supposedly, he actually, you ask him a question and he actually looks into the right hand side up and he gives you an answer. When, when was your matriculation examination? I think I, it was, he looks at somehow right, you know, towards the top and he gives you a right answer. With the wrong body language, he is very honest. He's superb honest, he's not lying. Right hand side elevation, top, eye gestures, signs of honesty, integrity, truthfulness. With the same body language, just the opposite, left hand side, chud bolneka factory. While he looks at the left hand side, top and he looks at you he's lying he can never be correct you need to have a third party alliance to find out whether it's correct or not these are few things while a person starts a conversation if a person clears his throat <clears throat> and he starts he's a very transparent and a good human being even with the wrong body language not a problem a person who looks up and starts a conversation he looks up and starts a conversation. He has forgotten the order of thoughts, what he was supposed to speak in the conversation. A person who looks down and then he speaks, that means he, he is very, very nervous. You need to warm him up, have a glass of water. Would you want to have some tea? Make him comfortable and go ahead doing it. And the last tip of the interview for my youngest generation of friends, anytime you are nervous in an interview, be happy that you're nervous because the interviewer is going to ask you a question. Are you nervous? You'll always say, yes, sir, I'm nervous. The interviewer will say, why? You will say, just because it's my life's first interview. I'm very nervous. He will say, would you want to have a glass of water? You will say, yes. These are signs of honesty and transparency because the interviewer knows you are young. The interviewer knows that you don't have years of experience. They understand that. And just because you drank a glass of water is not going to give you a job. That's wrong. 
The wrongest part is you are nervous, you're caught, you're nervous, but the person said, are you nervous? You say, no, I'm not nervous. You're acting over your age, you're overconfident. Be humble, be down to earth, drink the water, and the person will say, comfortable? You'll say, yes, sir, I'm comfortable now. Smile, address the fact that you're nervous. He will ask you, what is the most important achievement of your life? Say, don't narrate something which has had happened in 1857 AD and BC and wanted to bring in something here. Ega sa kutta tha, nothing like that. Make it very simple and say, sitting in front of you today, being interviewed by you is my biggest achievement. Whether I get the job or not, you remain my superhero. I'll always remember you are the first person who interviewed me. Life is very simple. We make it complicated. But then please understand to know how to move your fingers hands, legs, face, uh, eyes, and that's it. And there is no rocket science. It's very simple. The only fact is we have to be humble. We have to be down to earth. And importantly is we need to know how to actually utilize our body. There are many people while they are talking in an interview board, they keep on, you know, dancing this. Or even many people, when they ask something, Would you, are you open for geographical relocation? They say, I don't know. This kind of a body language speaks about indifference. You are actually maligning the reputation of the person. You are young, be young. You are inexperienced, be inexperienced. Without experience also, you will have a fantastic character. Without, uh, you know, knowing men, you, you, you are a young child, hardly 21, 22, 23 years of age. What have you seen in life? So address the, uh, accept the fact and say, I have a license not to know many things. I'm happy about it. But once we go a little trained on these issues, the interviewer finds that you have done a research and, you know, homework before you came in to invest time. I think in a small way, this is what we can, you know, talk about body languages. I don't know how Tina liked it or not. but then I, Tina loved it. I loved it. <laughs> and then while you were talking about this body language, I remember as a young girl, I remember when, I, when my mother used to ask me a question and I used to say, I don't know. I used to do this, you know, and then, you know, I got a spank from her you know, and she told me, what is this body language? Why are you putting, putting up your shoulders like this? This is not the way to be. You're telling me that I, you're, you're not giving a damn to me. And she knew a lot about body language, you know, so she used to be very, very particular. And she used to follow, you know, the British, uh, you know, the yes. queen, and queens and how they used to have their food and dinner and all this. So uh, she used to be a great stickler for, you know, body language. And so, you know, and now when I, you know, I've seen my... My little boy, you know, his legs are on one side, his uh, thing. But then, you know, they are young people. So they, as they grow up, they will gradually become more sophisticated. I don't want to push them too much. But why I wanted you to come is that because you are uh, a kind of a hero for me for uh, in these kind of things, you know, where you can connect so well and so beautifully with young people and older people and elderly people alike. That, you know, that is why when you speak, the younger generation is going to like, okay, today you have given such a wonderful lesson. In fact, I felt like a student. I was sitting and I was saying, wow, okay, this. So, you know, so for, for the younger generation, you are like a hero. You are a hero for them. You're an icon. So when you speak, they will follow. And the kind of things that you have said, these are such important things. And you, and you put the reference of interview. And that was very, very important because now these young people that I'm talking about, they are, they are college goers and then they will go and do some internship or something. So all these interview things, this is very, very important. So thank you, Anjan. You know, it has been a pleasure and it has been an absolutely marvelous, marvelous afternoon that you had come in and you had spoken so well and you are like so thorough with your training. That is why, you know, I always tell people that if you haven't listened to Anjan, then you have not had something, you know, the most important experience in your life. Thank you you so have much, to have Sarah. a training. Thank you you mm -hmm. have to have a training with Anjan Chaudhary in Skillfinity or wherever he is training. You must take it, people, because otherwise you are missing out on life. You're missing some of the best, best moments in your life because I have been a part of your uh, many different, you know, the varied kind of trainings that you have had. And I have gathered so much of knowledge. I've gathered so much of learning. That uh, today, you know, uh, uh, even if I was nervous a couple of years back, today I'm much more confident about many things because I've learned a lot of things from you. And the experience, kind of experience you carry with yourself from abroad,
from within India itself, locally as well. You know, seriously, that is no wonder I call you the best trainer in the Northeast. At least Thank Northeast. You so much, Thank you so Thank you very, very much. Uh, Anjan, it's true. I don't know if it, it might be India also. You know, we haven't we haven't taken the, uh, the, the, the study of India, but I would also like love to say that, that you're the best uh, one of the best trainers from India, then you know the other trainers are going to come and kill me. I must say one of the best trainers from India, but you truly are the best. You know, seriously, thank you so much. It has been Thanks a privilege honor. And for it young is. people, I hope I hope all of you enjoyed today's uh, video that we we specially uh, designed for you both Anjan and I. <clears throat> so for body language is a very very big. It's a huge study. So uh, I think Anjan will not refute one thing that why he was telling you young people that uh, somebody is observing your body language. If you can study body language, you can also observe other people's body language as well. You can become experts in that field. Absolutely. So all the best to you. And thank you Anjan. Thank you Thanks, uh, viewers. And thank you Freebirds because Freebirds is here with us actually doing this recording and everything. Thank you very much. Uh, the person who is behind, uh, behind this recording is Reep Jyoti. Thank you Reep Jyoti and everyone who is involved with this. Thank you very much and we'll make more videos for all of you next time. Anjan is going to come back. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tim. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Anjan. Thank you. Thanks, Tim.